Hi boys and girls, hope you're also keeping well and enjoying lots of time at home. Now, it's about lunchtime here, so I thought that maybe I would get make myself a sandwich first before I do today's story. So I thought maybe you could help me. So let's go make a sandwich now. I'm making a ham sandwich, so hopefully it'll be nice. So I've got my butter. And I've got my ham. What am I missing? My bread. Where's my bread? I can't make a sandwich without bread. I wonder who's stolen my bread. Who do you think it is, boys and girls? Do you think it was Milo again? Let's go ask. Milo, did you steal my bread? Where have you put my bread? Oh, he's licking his lips, boys and girls. I think he's maybe had some. Let's go have a hunt and see if we can find my bread. Okay, boys and girls, we're in the living room again. See if you can see my bread. Milo stole my bread. There's all his toys. Milo, where is it? Where did you put my bread? He's not telling me, boys and girls. Give me a shout if you can see my bread. Don't think it's in this room. Let's try another room. Okay, boys and girls, we're in the bathroom now. Give me a shout if you can see my bread. Oh, Milo might be showing us. Milo, that's all my Sunday school teddies. party with all my Sunday school teddies. They're all having some of my bread. Uh oh. Thank you boys and girls for helping me find my teddies and my bread that Milo stole. He's very bold and you'll be glad to know I had a yummy ham sandwich for my lunch. So today's story has something to do with bread. Hmm. I wonder what it's about. It's called Filled Full, and it's in your Jesus Storybook Bible, if you want to follow along. Now, there were once 5,000 tired and hungry and probably very grumpy people sitting on a hillside wanting their dinner. They come to hear Jesus that day. They came before breakfast, stayed all morning and all afternoon, and way past dinner. No one had meant to be out there for that long, but that's how it was listening to Jesus, as if time didn't exist. People could listen to Jesus for hours, and on this particular day, that's just what they did. But they hadn't brought enough food, and they couldn't just go and buy themselves a burger and fries, because of course they were in the middle of nowhere, and that food hadn't been invented yet anyway. What would they do? Jesus' friends had an idea. Let's send everyone home for dinner. They don't need to go, Jesus said. You can give them something to eat. Did Jesus want them to travel all the way to town and buy food for everyone? Jesus' friends panicked. But we don't have enough money. What food do you have? Jesus asked. Go and see. Now, there was a little boy in the crowd. He had brought his lunch that his mother had made for him that morning. He looked at his five loaves of bread and two fish. It wasn't much. Not nearly enough for 5,000 people. But it was all he had. I have some, he said. Jesus' friends laughed when they saw his little lunch. That's not nearly enough, they said, but they were wrong. Jesus knew it didn't matter how much the little boy had. God would make it enough, more than enough. Jesus said, bring me what you have. And so the little boy gave Jesus his lunch. Jesus winked at the little boy and whispered in his ear, watch. How in the world will Jesus feed everyone with just that? 
Jesus' friends said, because they thought it was impossible. But Jesus knew the one who had made all the fish in the oceans. And Jesus knew the one who in the very beginning had made everything out of nothing at all. How hard would something like that be for someone like that? Mm. Jesus took the little boy's lunch, looked up to heaven and thanked his father. Then Jesus gave his, the little lunch back to his friends. As Jesus' friends started to hand out the food, do you know what? It was the strangest thing. No matter how much they broke off, there was always more and more and more. Enough for 5,000. Everyone ate as much as they wanted. Second helping, third helpings, even fourth helpings until they were full and there were still leftovers. Well, Jesus did many miracles like this. Things people thought could never happen that weren't natural. But it was the most natural thing in all the world. It's what God had been doing from the very beginning, of course. Taking nothing and making it everything. Taking the emptiness and filling it up. Taking the darkness and making it light. So that was today's story, boys and girls. And I really hope you were listening because once again, we have another quiz. Now, today's quiz has nine questions with the last question being a bonus question. So there's two points for the last question. So you can have up to 10 points if you get this right. And don't forget to keep a score of your of how many points you get and then get somebody to email it through to the church and we'll tally them all up so that when we're back in church we know what everyone got. Okay, so today's first question is what food was in today's story? What food was in today's story? It was five loaves of bread and two fish. What were the people on the hillside doing? Why were they all there? What were they doing? They were listening to Jesus. What did the little boy want to do with his lunch? What did he want to do with his lunch? Did he want to eat it all himself? No, he wanted to share it with everyone. Question four. How did Jesus know that it would be enough to feed everyone? Jesus know it be enough to feed everyone? Because God would make it enough. Question five. What did Jesus do after he took the little boy's lunch? What did he do after he took the little boy's lunch? He looked up to heaven and thanked his father. Question six, who handed out all the food? So who handed out all the food? It was Jesus' friends. Question seven, what happened when they handed out all the food? Did it run out? What happened? Now 
no matter how much they broke off, there was always more. Question eight. Why did this happen? What was Jesus able to do? So why did this happen? What was Jesus able to do? Jesus was able to perform miracles. And question nine, so this is our bonus question. So if you get this right, you get two points, okay? There's two parts to it. What can God turn nothing into? What can God turn nothing into? He can turn it into everything, but what can he turn darkness into? What can God turn darkness into? He can turn it into light. Boys and girls, well done for doing the quiz and listening to the story. I really hope you had fun today. Now, before I go, I think today we'll maybe do a wee bit of a prayer. Okay, so we did this a few weeks ago. So what I would like you to do is make sure you can still see the screen or wherever you're watching this from and go and find somewhere nice and quiet in the room to lie down just by yourself or you can sit up just by yourself. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a wee minute just to pray to God by ourselves. So in this prayer, it's just you talking to God. So you can ask him for anything. You can tell him if you're feeling happy, if you're feeling sad, if you're feeling worried, whatever you're feeling, it's just your time with God, okay? So you go and find somewhere nice and quiet, but still see the screen to sit or lie down. And we're going to do it for one minute. And then at the end, we're going to do our wind up, amen, okay? So one minute of quietness. Well done boys and girls okay we're gonna get ready for our wind up amen so you ready amen well done boys and girls i will see you very soon for another story bye